But there was no scientific breakthrough in the one area that mattered most to the Tsar and Tsarina, medicine. Nicholas and Alexandra's desperate concern for their son's well-being was to dominate their thoughts and shape their destiny. The first clue that a savior for the little boy might have come can be found in Nicholas's diary. November the 1st, 1905. We have got to know a man of God, Gregory, from Tobolsk province. When Gregory Rasputin arrived in St. Petersburg, his reputation as a mystical faith healer had preceded him. For Nicholas and Alexandra, Rasputin symbolized the simple soul of the Staritz, the holy man of Russian folk tradition. They believed that God had at last answered their prayers. Rasputin was to worm his way into the hearts of the imperial family. From an early age, Alexandra had wanted her son to lead as normal a life as possible. A sailor named Derevenko was assigned to protect the fragile Alexei. He was the young boy's constant companion, but by necessity he was also something of a warden. It was a constant struggle to provide Alexei with a normal, happy childhood and still keep him alive. As Alexei grew up, severe bruising and hemorrhaging continued to appear without warning, often threatening his life. The doctors were at a loss. In May of 1905, Gregory Rasputin arrived at Alexei's bedside and uttered a few soothing words. To everyone's amazement, bleeding in the suffering young Tsarevich stopped. To the Empress, it was a miracle. She was blind to Rasputin's public image of depravity and deceit. <laughs> 